Okay, good morning, councillors, officers, members of the public. Welcome to this virtual meeting of Northern Planning Committee. I'm Councillor Craig Brown, your chairman for today's meeting. I'll just begin by explaining a few ground rules for those taking part in the meeting. Firstly, please can you keep your cameras and microphones switched off until I invite you to speak. This is to ensure that only one voice can be heard at a time uh, without interruption. It also helps to avoid feedback and background noise, as well as to save on bandwidth. For members of the committee wishing to speak during a debate or raise a procedural point, please can you indicate your desire to do so using the chat facility, which can be accessed via the information bar near the centre of your screen. Present at today's meeting are the members of Northern Planning Committee, and I will now call them by, by name one by one and ask them to turn on their camera and microphone, introduce themselves and confirm that they can hear the proceedings. So I'd like to do that starting with uh, good morning to Councillor Liz Braithwaite. Good morning, Chair. Uh, Councillor Liz Braithwaite, I can see and hear you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Braithwaite. Good morning, Councillor Dean. Oh, good morning, Chair. Yes, uh, present and correct. Um, I'll just see if my camera is working. Yes, I think you can see me now, can you? Thank you very much, Councillor Dean. Uh, good morning, Councillor, uh, Councillor Findlow. Yes, present. Thank you. Good morning, Councillor Harewood. Good morning, Chair. I can see and hear you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Councillor Holland. Good morning, Chair. Sally Holland speaking, and I can see and hear you. Thank you, Councillor Holland. Good morning, Councillor McFarlane. Good morning, Chair and everybody. Yes, I can see and hear you perfectly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Good morning, Councillor Mannion. Good morning, Chair and everybody. Yes, I can see and hear you clearly. Thank you. Thank you. And good morning, Councillor Murphy. I can now see you also, but I can't hear you at the moment. Morning, Mr Chairman. Just made it. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Uh, good morning, Councillor Nicholas. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, everybody. Yeah. See and hear loud and clear. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Councillor Puddicombe. Uh, good morning, Chair. Hearing you loud and clear. Thank you, Councillor Puddicombe. Uh, last but not least, good morning, Councillor Smethen. Good morning. Yes, thank you. I can see and hear well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Smethen. Also present at the meeting are the following officers who are here to advise us regarding the applications on the agenda. And they are Paul Wakefield, Principal Planning Officer, Nikki Folan, Planning Solicitor, Neil Jones, Principal Development Officer, Highways, and Sarah Baxter, Democratic Services Officer. I'll now briefly explain how the committee will operate. The planning officer will introduce the application, show slides, photographs, and plans regarding the site. And I will then invite any registered public speakers to address the committee and ask them to switch on their camera and microphone and state their name and the name of any group that they may be representing. I'll advise them how much time they have and that they must finish within this, otherwise the camera, uh, sorry, the microphones may be muted to enable the meeting to continue. If anything the public speaker has said was unclear, I will allow members to ask questions of clarification. And once they've spoken, the public speakers will be asked to turn off their camera and microphone uh, but to remain in the meeting and listen to the rest of the debate and the decision if they wish. The planning officer will respond to any issues raised by the public and then members will be able to ask the planning officer questions before moving to debate the application. I remind members to indicate in the chat function if they wish to speak during the debate. When the debate moves to a close, I will check with the officer uh, whether they have any final advice to give and that the terms of the resolution which have been moved and seconded are clear to everybody. I'll then invite each member of the committee in alphabetical order to turn on their camera and microphone to confirm their support for the resolution or otherwise by stating for, against or not voting. And the result of the vote will then be reported back to the meeting. 
As a reminder, members of the committee can only participate in and vote on the application if they're able to uh, hear uh, throughout the debate. Uh, if a member loses their connection and is able to alert us to this fact, the meeting may be able to adjourn for a short period to allow them to reconnect. If they're unable to reconnect within a short time, the meeting will continue without them and they'll be unable to participate in or vote on that particular application. If the live stream of the meeting fails, the meeting will be adjourned for a short time to try and restore the connection. If it's not possible to do that, the meeting will be postponed to a new date. Finally, please note that this meeting is being recorded and streamed live to the public, and also that there will be a fire alarm test at 11 a.m. We now move on to the agenda proper, uh, and item one is apologies for absence. Are there any apologies, Mrs. Baxter? None, Chairman. Thank you very much. Item two is declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest from committee members? Uh, please, can you indicate now if you would have anything to declare? I will take that as no declaration. So on to item three, which is the minutes of the previous meeting, which took place on the 9th of September. Please, can I ask somebody who was present for the whole meeting to propose uh, them as a correct record. And unfortunately that discount off and I believe Councillor Dean, thank you. Uh, Councillor Holland? Yeah, happy to propose those minutes. Thank you, Councillor Holland. Councillor Nicholas? I'm happy to do a, a second. Thank you, Councillor Nicholas. So it's been proposed uh, by Councillor Hall and seconded by Councillor Nicholas. Uh, I'll now invite each member of the committee in alphabetical order to confirm their support or otherwise by stating for, against or not voting. When members do so, please could they turn on their camera to identify themselves. Uh, starting with Councillor Liz Braithwaite, please. Thank you, Councillor Braithwaite. Councillor Dean, you were absent. Not voting. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Paul Findlow. Four. Thank you. Councillor Harewood. <coughs> Not voting, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Holland. Yes, four, Chair. Thank you. Councillor McFarlane. Four. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Nick Mannion. Four, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Murphy, I believe you were absent. You're not voting. Yes, Thank you were absent. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Nicholas. Four. Thank you. Councillor Puddicombe. Four. Thank you. And Councillor Smetham. Uh, four. Can I just add that at the moment I see that my chat box isn't... Um, functioning so I'm I will need to try some other way when I need to ask to speak. Thank you Councillor Smotham. Uh, we'll try and sort that out with, with IT in the meantime but uh, yes please, please use the hand function if you're unable to use the chat. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then finally myself Councillor Craig Brown uh, not voting as I was uh, uh, absent for one of the items due to a declaration of interest. Um, however, I believe those minutes are, are clearly carried. Thank you. On to item four, which is public speaking time. Uh, members and members of the public who have registered to speak will be called at the appropriate time in relation to the item that they have registered for. So we'll now move on to our first planning application, item five. Um, and this is application number 20-1472M. Uh, for the redevelopment of a former garden centre to 10 number dwellings, including two affordable units, with associated landscaping together with conversion of the existing site uh, building to office use at Ollerton Nursery, Chelford Road, Ollerton, uh, on behalf of an applicant. So I'd now like to invite our planning officer, Paul Wakefield, to make the presentation on this application, please. Thank you, Chairman. Good morning, everybody. 
Um, so there was an update report circulated earlier this week uh, that covered the uh, drainage aspects and the flood risk aspects of the proposal, um, and which recommended a couple of conditions that were already recommended within the original report. So that, that addressed that particular outstanding issue. There is one further verbal update that I would like to give you um, because reference to open space provision uh, was omitted from the original report. Um, as members where policy SE6 of the, of the Cheshire's local plan sets out the open space requirements for developments, which in this particular case we would want to be provided on site. Um, the site layout plan, as I'll come to during the presentation, has been amended um, to show proposed areas of open space within the within the application site. These areas exceed the, the, the requirements within the policy of 65 square metres per dwelling outlined in, in policy SE6. Um, but also a local area for play and a management and maintenance arrangements for the open space in perpetuity would also be required. In addition to that, um, a contribution towards off-site recreation and outdoor sport would be required at a rate of £1,000 per family dwelling, which would be directed towards uh, Oaklands Road playing field in Allerton, where it would be used for pitch improvements and informal active recreation. Now these requirements would need to be secured as part of the Section 106 agreement, which we've already uh, proposed as part for the, for the, for the affordable housing. Um, and this is the same way as they were secured as part of the previous outline permission as well. Uh, just to cover the SIL regulations, um, the, provision, the provision of open space is necessary to make the development acceptable in planning terms in order to provide sufficient open space to serve the development and to comply with planning policy. It is directly related to the development and fair and reasonably related in scale and kind to the development. And on this basis, the planning obligation is considered to be compliant with the SIL regulations 2010. Uh, so turning to the presentation, I'll just try and share my screen. Just bear with me. Hopefully everyone can see that, and I'm, I've just flipped, changed, changed slide. To, we're now yeah. looking at the application plan. Yeah, good. Thank you. Uh, so this is the application site, Allerton Garden Centre, close to Marfa Crossroads. Uh, we've got Seven Sisters Lane to the um, sort of southwest, Martha Lane. Uh, sorry to yeah, sorry to the southeast, Martha Lane uh, to the northeast, and then Chelford Road to the um, the, the west as well. Uh, the east, sorry, <laughs> getting confused by east and west. So yeah, Chelford Road to the uh, to the east, uh, which is the road directly into Nutsford. Uh, as you can see, there are a few um, areas of, of surrounding development, primarily residential in nature, although the, 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 there's the Duncow public house as well, just on the, at the top of the screen there as well. Just to put it uh, in an aerial shot, as we can see, the existing buildings on the site uh, relating to the former use as, as a garden centre. Uh, it's not been used for some time as such, but um, the buildings do, do still exist. And you can see the existing residential development um, along Martha Lane and, and on, on um, cul-de-sacs shooting off from Martha Lane as well. And similarly, uh, the application site is bordered by residential properties Holly House, which is just on Shelford Road, uh, and then other properties along Seven Sisters Lane as well. So this is the existing site plan um, with a variety of buildings and glass houses that currently exist on the site. Um, and as you can see, just, uh, just as we go through the photographs, this is probably useful just to note that as you can see, the buildings are um, reference with letters A, B, C, etc. Now those, it might just be worth referring to the, that, that particular plan um, within your key plans, which I think is four plans in, uh, just so when we're going through the site in the photographs, you'll, you'll be able to um, cross-reference which buildings we're looking at, because obviously it's, it's quite a, a large site, there's a number um, and it, it might be difficult to follow just from the photographs alone. So if we've got reference to the site plan, it would probably help as well. 
So this is the application site at, at the moment. It's it's hoarded off from Chelford Road, uh, just where the white car is, is the existing access to the site. And you can just see Holly House, which is a neighbouring property uh, on the right hand side there. Again, views of the exit with the application site up to the application site from Chelford Road. And then looking back uh, along Chelford Road towards Seven Sisters Lane. So this is looking in the direction towards Macclesfield <coughs> with the site on the right hand side. Then within the site, as, as you enter, um, looking from the site access, we're just looking directly um, across the site here with, with the access directly behind, <coughs> excuse me. And then again, looking uh, from the existing access drive to the, the other side of the, the hoarding that runs along uh, Chelford Road at the moment. And then a view of Holly House, which is a property adjacent to the application site, which itself is accessed from Chelford Road. So uh, this is the existing barn to be converted, which is building J on the plans, just on the right hand side of the existing entrance. Um, as you can see, it's sort of traditional brick built structure. Then um, looking west in the garden of the existing property to the north, which is building I, which is close to the to, close to the boundary of the, the site. Then looking west um, here, I think we're stood on the access drive with the, uh, the converted the barn to be converted behind and um, building C on the on the left hand side. You can see the access road, road running through the site. That's the yellow structure. And again, the northwestern part of the site, one of the existing glass houses, uh, which is H. As you can see, it's quite overgrown at the moment. And then the southwestern part of the site, which are buildings E to J, E to G, sorry. Further glass houses. And then from the middle of the site looking east, um, we've got um, well a collection of buildings really, but I think the main one or the larger, the glass house structure is building A. You can see the barn <coughs> again as a reference point to be converted over on the left hand side. Again, further views of buildings uh, in the southern part of the site. And then looking at the proposed site plan, um, as you can see, uh, 10 dwellings proposed with the, with the existing converted barn, uh, parking to serve the barn on either side of it. Um, the dwellings are served off two sort of cul-de-sac roads, um, which have regard to the presence of three uh, TPO trees within the centre of the site, which are retained and we, you know, used as a, as a feature element of the site where the, so this is where the open space will be part of the open space will be located as well. The hatched areas being the, being the open space. So we've got this this main area within the centre of the site and then two smaller areas close to the um, close to the entrance as well. Each dwelling, as you can see, will have off road parking. <coughs> And then just to, for information really, as members will be aware, a previous scheme, well, a number of previous schemes have been considered by the committee, one of which, or the most recent of which was approved. Um, it was an outline permission uh, for layout and scale. And the left-hand side uh, of these two plans is, is the one that was approved, and the right-hand side is that which was proposed. So as you can see, it follows that similar format to what was previously, previously approved and accepted. And then just if you just look on the right hand side, you can see this this line here. This is a section um, which I think is on this next slide here. So that line just shows um, that central open space and landscaped area comprising the three protected trees. 
how that is retained, and then the two the the, the two cul-de-sacs, if you like, um, border it on either side, uh, with the land level slightly lower, as you can see uh, on this particular section, um, and the text here, which we can't quite read, it, it refers to the height of these buildings not exceeding the, the tallest part of the existing glass houses on the site, or the, the tallest of the existing glass houses on the site. Uh, landscaping plans, again, focused around the retention of these three. Um, additional tree plants are proposed, uh, hedge-lined uh, cul-de-sacs are proposed as well, so it, it, it and fairly generous garden areas, <clears throat> particularly in the, the northern areas of the site where, where the site is currently most open. Um, but you can see that the sort of green approach does reflect the uh, the, the sort of semi-rural nature of the site and, and its, its previous use as a, as a garden centre and nursery. Then proposed elevations, um, members will have seen within their plans uh, that it, they adopt a, a relatively contemporary approach. Um, there's quite a lot on these, I won't spend too long, but as you can see, um, there's a few different types of, of dwelling proposed, all on a similar theme. Uh, plots four and six. And then seven and eight all on a similar theme and I think, yeah, and then plots nine and 10, which are the two in the north at the northern end of the site. And then the, the barn conversion, as we said, office accommodation over two floors is proposed, um, but the barn is, is, is retained in its current form, as we can see. Uh, and a bit of additional detail about materials that are currently uh, proposed within dwellings. Um, so we've got a smooth red sandstone, <coughs> excuse me, porcelain cladding and these bronze effect panels. I mean, the bronze effect panels and the red sandstone, clearly in, in colour terms, that they're, they're red, uh, with the intention being to uh, be a, a more modern interpretation of the, the sort of Cheshire brick that you do find in the local areas. And then the cladding, um kind of easy, you know it would it's, it's a modern a modern material which um again given the the wide range of, of materials that are in the area you know in terms of render brickwork etc then um in a, in a contemporary development such as this these are, are felt to be appropriate and uh, that's everything chairman so for the reasons set out in the report it is recommended for approval uh thank you very much Thank you very much, Mr Wakefield. Uh, we have a number of uh, public speakers registered for this item, so I'd like to now move to the first of those uh, and invite Councillor Mark Asquith, who is the Ward Councillor, to turn on his camera and microphone. Uh, Councillor Asquith, you have five minutes. Please begin whenever you're ready. Good morning, Chairman. Good morning, Members. Uh, you'll be pleased to know I'm not going to say very much. Uh, I note in the agenda, pages 11, 12 and 13, you have the uh, entire text of the reason for the call-in. Uh, this is based on the submissions made by the Parish Council. Uh, they object to this application. I invite you to the, read those submissions and consider them in your deliberations. I have nothing further to say. Uh, thank you, Councillor Asquith. Um, are there any questions, members, back to you, Councillor Asquith? Uh, yes, Councillor Paul Findlow, please. Is the local member is the local member going to tell us his view on the uh, reasons for the call in, as expressed by the uh, parish council? I'm I'm fully supportive of the uh, parish council's submissions. Um, I don't I don't wish to add to them in any way, um, but I'm yes. in ad idem with them. Well, I'm glad there's consensus, consensus ad item, as lawyers used to say, but uh, we, we now live in the delatinized wor legal world, I understand. But uh, thank you for that clarity that the local member is in support of the Parish Council. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Finlow. Any further questions, members? 
No, nope, I'm not seeing anybody. In that case, Councillor Asquith, I could invite you to turn off your camera and microphone again, but please feel free to stay in the meeting and observe the debate. Well, thank you uh, for your time, Chairman. Good morning, everybody. You, good morning. Uh, could I now invite our next speaker, who is Parish Councillor Nick Speakman, representing Ollerton with Marthal Parish Council. And again, Parish Councillor Speakman, you have uh, five minutes. Please begin whenever you're ready. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the Parish Council have two main areas of concern with the application. Firstly, back in 2016, this site had an application for 26 dwellings, which was deemed an inappropriate form of development and environmentally unsustainable. The appeal to the planning inspectorate in 2017 was refused for much the same reasons. The application was eventually approved in 2018 for just 10 dwellings. Yet the application before us now is materially different in the, in, than that approved application will have a greater and more substantial impact on the openness of the green belt, having increased in both mass and height. We realise that houses will be built on this site and we want those houses to enhance the, enhance the area and integrate into the parish in a workable and sustainable way, long after the developer has moved on to other projects. Therefore, this application must not be allowed to grow into fulfilling the earlier rejected application's ambitions by stealth. As a result, we request that conditions are applied that prevent further infill buildings on open parts of the site with removal of permitted development rights and make sure that all 106 and open green spaces are adhered to by the developer. Secondly, we have a number of concerns around drainage. The application does not take into account or even mention the surrounding resident septic tanks. All the existing surrounding properties drain into the nursery site and there is no consideration at all of this within any drainage strategy documents. It goes without saying how devastating this could be to those neighbouring households. Cheshire East Highways have said that they have concerns regarding the surface water drainage strategy, which needs to be resolved prior to any construction, and that the applicant needs to submit a land drainage consent application with detailed engineering specification, neither of which has been done. United Utilities have questioned the applicant's drainage strategy, stating that no development shall commence until a surface water drainage scheme has been submitted. Indeed, United Utilities have pointed out that the developer has simply provided options rather than a drainage strategy. Residents are understandably concerned that they are going to face future issues around general surface water drainage, as the area of Ollerton Crossroads is notorious for flooding now. And more importantly, they are concerned at the complete disregard for their needs regarding septic tank drainage. These concerns need to be addressed properly, fully and comprehensively before approving this application. Finally, we have concerns around the proposed office building. Additional parking spaces and driveways are not necessary in the parts of the site that were previously undeveloped and absent of any building. And also screening trees must be retained in this area. And there are still major concerns in the Parish Council regarding the entrance to this site. Ollerton Crossroads is a well-known accident black spot. This application simply adds to that danger and no improvements have been proposed. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Speakman. Councillor Harewood, I believe you have a question. I'm trying to unmute. Thank you, Chair. Um, can I ask the speaker, please? Did you did you indicate that you that you you think you you're agreeing that houses will be built on this site? Did I hear you say that? Yes, you did say that. Um, can I ask another question, Chair? Please do. That um, what you concerned with is the number of how are you concerned with the number of houses? No, we're concerned you're not concerned with the number of houses. We're not concerned with the number of houses. We're concerned that the application that's before you now is materially different than the one that was approved before. It's already increased in both mass and height. And we're worried that the green spaces that are being allocated are simply being allocated for future infill. So instead of being allocated, any space within that site needs to be um, kept as it's green space in perpetuity and, and we need to have some conditions applied to that to pre prevent any further infill building on that site because otherwise we will end up with the with the applications that were rejected back in 2016 and 2017 that's our concern and we're also obviously concerned about 
drainage from septic tank. Thank you so much. Thank you, you Councillor Howard. Councillor Tony Dean, please. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, Mr. Spigman, you, you mentioned that the, this application is different from the already approved application for the same number of houses, uh, but it has an increase in mass and height. Yes. Um, if you don't know the answer to this, I'll ask the officers. But do you know what the percentage increase in mass is, or is that to uh, and height? Is there is a, a scale for this increase? Um, I personally don't. Uh, there are plans that on the um, planning portal. There are documents from uh, a local resident who lives at number one U3 Cottage, uh, and they provided quite detailed examinations and comparisons of those plans to, to back up what I've just said. So it's not. I don't think even they can, uh, gave a percentage as such, but they, they gave sort of shaded diagrams to, to indicate the increase in size and so on. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Paul Finlow, please. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so, but for the important matters of mass, height and drainage, you'd be in favour? Yes, yes. We, we, it's already been approved once. So can, and, and we have concerns, obviously, around, um, you know, the accident black spot and other things. We've got minor concerns, but fun, the fundamental issues are that we're worried that the developer will get this approval and then start to fill in the rest of the sites on the excuse of being infill and therefore end up with what their original uh, aspirations were back in 2016 and 2017. So this is just like that those applications have been done by stealth. That's our first concern. And, our, and our, one of the biggest concerns by local residents is, is where is their septic tank water going to go? Because absolutely no consideration has been given to that. So we add access to it. I know that junction quite well, uh, uh, which you described as an accident black spot. So do we add access to height, mass height and drainage? I'm sorry, I don't understand what the question was. Well, perhaps it's more of a comment and inappropriate. I was just saying that uh, access, uh, uh, you've confirmed that access is an important, relevant matter. Yeah, I mean, that area has had a, a various um, changes made to it over recent years to reduce speed uh, and uh, improve visibility and reduce speed on both um, Chelford Road and, and Marfell Lane and Seven Sisters Lane to try and reduce the number of accidents there. But again, we're just registering a concern that, that, that there's no consideration being made for that. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Ian McFarlane, please. Yes, good morning, uh, Mr. Speakman. Um, um, I went out yesterday to look at the site and had a peep round. Obviously, it's very low lying. And uh, in the comments, there's lots of uh, information coming out on drainage and septic tanks. And I was I was quite interested to look at the application form, uh, which was put in on the portal by the applicants on the 6th of uh, April uh, under foul sewage. And uh, he's ticked the box saying that that will be disposed of by a main sewer. Um, is that correct? Uh, I, I, I thought septic the tanks main, were... The main sewer is to deal with the, the new houses, the existing residents that surround the, the area of the application that will continue to be on a septic tanks. So there's no provision. So it really, it's mostly septic tanks around the, the whole site? Wholly uh, septic tanks around the site. There, are, there, aren't, there is no main sewage within about 70, 80 yards. The nearest main sewer is at Woods Close, which is going back to Wilds Market. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Brian Puddicombe, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, Councillor Speakman, I'm trying to understand your concerns about the uh, permitted development rights and the effect on the uh, openness of the site. So we do have a recommended condition removal of permitted development rights for extensions and outbuildings, but you would wish it to go further than that, would you? Um, yeah, basically, um, we're worried that the whole site, there, there are areas of the site that could still be left for development. So we don't want it to, you know, stealthily turn into the application that was, that was you know, con con conclusively refused both by Cheshire East and uh, by the planning inspector, um, because you know we we just don't want it to become that application by stealth. We accept that this the, the 2018 application was approved, 
we accept that this one will probably be approved in some form and we don't object to that we but we're concerned that there is a, a longer game being played here and want to avoid that game reaching a conclusion that favors the developer okay thank you thank you councillor puddicombe uh, i don't think there are any further questions so also thank you councillor speakman please could i ask you to now turn off your camera and microphone but do feel free to remain in the meeting and uh, observe and listen to the debate could i now call our third speaker uh, jackie slater who is an objector um mrs slater you have uh, up to three minutes and maybe questions afterwards please begin whenever you're ready Thank you. Can I just check you can see me? Yes, we can both see and hear you. Thank you. Thank you. As immediate neighbours, we recognise and accept that new houses are being built around our property. And my purpose in speaking to you today is to request your help in ensuring that these buildings successfully integrate into the community and enhance the area without causing irreparable damage to the green belt or ongoing misery and distress to residents. For us, there are two significant areas of concern, water, including drainage, and impact on the green belt. We understand that Ollerton is washed over by the green belt and note that the officer states in his report that he believes this proposal will cause a slightly greater impact on the openness of the green belt. Martin Planning Limited, in their objection submitted on behalf of our neighbour, take a very different view and highlight that this application is for much bulkier buildings than those originally proposed when outline permission was given. They also remind us that the planning inspector himself had real concerns about the impact of this development on the green belt. To us, these comments by both the officer and Martin Planning imply that any further development on the site will definitely have a significant impact on the green belt and will definitely cause substantial harm. So we respectfully request that you add conditions to any permission granted and ensure the green belt is not eroded by stealth over time by one yes removing permitted development rights and two ensuring that no further infill or any other development can take place on the site our second issue is around water both in and out we don't feel the officer has fully represented all the views expressed by united utilities in his report there's no mention of the water supply in the conditions he suggests Yet United Utilities have previously stated that the water mains will need extending to serve any development on this site and that if reinforcement of the water network is required to meet the extra demand, this could be a significant project. Any such project is bound to have a substantial impact on water supply for existing residents and we already have low water pressure. And as already mentioned, all the neighbouring properties to this site have septic tanks which don't discharge to surface water by the way. We've lived in our home for over 14 years now and have never had a problem with ours. However, we have noted a rise in the water table over that time. And as already mentioned, there's now regular flooding from the drain at the Chelford Road end of Seven Sisters Lane. It's not yet clear to us what drainage pro process the developer is putting in place, but we are seriously concerned about the impact this will have on the area. So we hope you can also help to ensure that comprehensive water supply and drainage plans are agreed in advance, which effectively integrate with the water supply and drainage needs of existing homes, and also the developer's link site on Seven Sisters Lane. Thank you very much, Mrs Slater. Councillor Harewood, I believe you wish to ask a question. I'm trying to uh, get out here. Um, I, I, I'm to come back to Mrs. Slater. Um, do I get it that it's a that you are distrustful of the future than of this present um, application? Is it a distrust that you have for the future? Um, I certainly do have distrust for the future. Yes, and part of that is that when outline permission was given, yes, we objected at the time, but we've accepted that now. But this is a very different application, we feel, to what to that that was put forward when you uh, granted outline permission. So we are fearful for the future. Yeah, OK. Um, um, can I ask another question, Chair, please? Yes, you may. Um, uh, would you, do you think that the water that you mentioned so um, much of supply 
has been addressed by utilities, the, the supply of water? No, not you, at all. You don't think that has been addressed? No, not that I've seen anyway. Not that you have seen? No. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Howard. Are there any further questions from other members? No. Thank you very much in that case, Mrs Slater. Please now turn off your camera and microphone, but feel free to remain in the meeting. Uh, could I could I now call our final speaker on this item, uh, Amy Brighouse, who is representing the applicant. Please could uh, you now turn on your camera and microphone. Good morning, I'm Amelia Brighouse and I'm speaking on behalf of the applicant, Dean Meredith from Brighouse Mobley. Could I just start you for one moment? We, we can't see your camera at the moment. Just about just going to apologise for, for not the camera, can we? OK, oh. uh, you have three minutes then. Please begin when you're ready. Yeah, this application um, is for full planning. For full planning follows closely the previous approved application for outline planning permission 183873M. This site is acknowledged as Brownfield. The National Planning Policy Framework states to make as much use as possible of previous developed land or brownfield land. This is reiterated by Cheshire East SE2 that they encourage the redevelopment stroke reuse of previously developed land. To comply with planning policy, the Greenbelt location of this brownfield site for residential redevelopment requires a contribution of affordable housing property and that in doing so, it does not cause substantial harm to the Greenbelt. This application is of low density, 10 number residences, befitting its rural location, two of which are affordable and it does not cause substantial harm to the Greenbelt. The built area is in fact reduced and with the current siting of the built form mass being broken down, it generally generates through open corridors and consequently improves both the spatial and the visual aspects of openness. This is redevelopment, not conversion. By breaking the original mass down, it generates a functional layout with houses that can breathe and benefit from generous gardens. Importantly, it makes the best use of this redevelopment opportunity for this brownfield site. The properties are contemporary in style as requested by the planning authority and again at their request are as low in height as possible to make them practically livable yet desirable. In our design concept we use a warm sympathetic material palette reflecting the Cheshire brick in the area. Smooth red sandstone complements light porcelain cladding with bronze effect panels blending with the surroundings and the use of contemporary glazed panels aids the openness concerns. It is our understanding that this application has been referred to the committee today, citing the, reason, the reasons for objection raised by Ollerton with Marshall Parish Council. And these views are summarised in the planning officer's report. The Parish Council do, Council do not appear to be up to date. We have addressed these concerns fully and comprehensively. The application has supplied up to date and approved tree and ecological surveys. The proposed access has been considered as providing suffi sufficient visibility and associated traffic movements acceptable. With regards to drainage, approval has been obtained from United Utilities to connect the foul and surface water drainage for the office and 10 properties to the adopted sewer on Chelford Road. A detailed below ground drainage plan drawn by an independent drainage expert, BDI, has addressed the drainage concerns, taking into consideration the neighbouring properties drains. And finally, I have already addressed the Parish Council's expressed concern about the impact on the Greenbelt in terms of both aspects of open... I'm sorry, you're out of time. Uh, there may be questions, however, from members. Uh, any, any member of the committee wishing to ask a question? Thank you. I'm just going to refer you over to, to my husband, Russ Brickhouse, who will answer any questions. Councillor Ailiff Tearwood, please. While I... Uh, Councillor Harewood, you've put yourself on mute, it appears. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, sorry. 
Um, I don't know if this is a planning um, question. How have you addressed the parish council on those concerns? You said they have been addressed. Have you personally addressed them? Or how have you addressed them? Is that, was that necessary, Chair, for a direct address to be made to the parish councils um, to allay the affairs? Or is that relevant? Would the, would the speaker like to answer that? Um, yes, it was uh, directly addressed. We wrote to the um, the parish council um, with their concerns about the drainage and explained we'd had the independent um, BDI report, which and spelt out that the drainage foul on surface was going off site. So therefore, the site overall would become drier by default because at the moment all of the surface water is on site. So we're removing all of that off site. The drainage um, drawing takes reference to the septic tank on the uh, the three properties on Seven Sisters. It notes that and notes where the outfall drain goes through the site. That is to be relocated slightly. It notes that on the drawing and also Holly House has got a um, outfall filtration into the site, which is at least 40 odd metres away from plot 10 um, on a historical. So all of those have been looked at and considered and they would be no different to what they are today, but by default better because the site overall would be drier because we're removing all of our surface and foul water from the site. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Paul Finlow, please. Thank mm. you. Uh, what binding commitments are you prepared to offer in relation to future additional developments beyond the 10 now proposed uh, on this cell site by any method, be it infill, permitted development rights or otherwise? Difficult to answer, but the uh, the officer's report says that obviously um, it, it's already written in there about permitted development uh, rights removed, which is which is correct on the extensions and whatnot, but uh, the outline uh, the outline application, which this application mirrors pretty well. The only difference is on the, on height when the introduction of a chimney massing um, is 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 the same of the actual uh, of the actual dwellings as the outline application. And the outline application didn't have any further restrictions, so we would sort of want to follow that. Thank you. I'll just check whether there are any further questions, members. Yeah. Councillor Tony Dean, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, Mr. Brinkhouse, the, um, you, you mentioned that the difference was, uh, the only difference is height. I'm going to try again with my earlier question. Do you have a change in height percentage from the already consented design for 10 dwellings? Uh, the only figure I can see is one building is 5.5 is, is metres versus the old buildings being 4.5. But that's not what I'm after. I'm after a change from the uh, consented uh, scheme. Um, and I don't understand if you say the height has increased, the only way that the massing can stay the same as the previous application is if you made the width and the depth of the houses smaller. Is, is that the case? Or does the height increase mean there has to be uh, a mass increase as well? The overall footprint um, has uh has not changed. It's just the chimney which has gone higher. So yes, I will correct myself. The size of a chimney, which is approximately one meter wide by 800 mil in thickness, would be the by the height of it, which is approximately 600 mil, which is about one square meter approximate, would be the increase in massing on per dwelling. But the overall area of the properties is the same. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I believe that's the end of the questions from members. Um, so again, Mr. Brigkaus, if you'd like to uh, remain in the meeting, uh, but turn off your uh, your microphone. Um, I'd now like to go back to our planning officer, Paul Wakefield. Uh, Mr. Wakefield, are there any issues that have been raised there that you would like to respond to before I go to members' questions? Thank you, Chairman. Just a couple. Um, it was clear that the, the, the main two issues were with regard to the um, 
the green belt and drainage. Uh, in terms of green belt, I think that the concern that I, I, I tend to got, uh, get from the um, speakers was more about future development. Um, and as, as we've highlighted, the permitted development, as Mr. Brickhouse highlighted, permitted development rights for the dwellings themselves, uh, it's recommended that they are removed as part of any permission that we do grant. Um, but I mean, the other aspect, I think, is this issue of, of potential infill in the future. Um, now, clearly, we can only assess the proposal that's before us against, you know, as, as a redevelopment of a brownfield site, we have to assess it against the existing development. We can't really entertain uh, future implications that might arise once this development is built. We have to assess the application as it is currently before us. We can't prevent um, and, and the limited infill of um, of sites within villages is, is not inappropriate in the green belt. So, um, so at this point in time, we can't say that such applications would not be forthcoming in the future. But all I can say, and is all that members need to have regard to, is that they will be assessed on their merits at the appropriate time. There's no restrictions that we can place on this permission that would prevent that happening in the future. Um, so that's that's an important point to note. Um, in terms of uh, mass, just a point on massing, I think Councillor Dean may be coming back to ask if I've got the, the, the figures for the massing of the previous proposal. Uh, I don't, <laughs> uh, to hand. Um, I think with a bit of time, I can probably just dig out the, the sort of volume calculations between the existing development, so the existing garden centre structures, and what is currently proposed. I, I can find that, which would um, probably be helpful. Um, and it would allow that assessment, the, the, the appropriate assessment to be made by members in terms of the comparison of the two existing and proposed uh, developments. Um, but that, that's as far as, it, as I can go on the, on the massing details. Uh, in terms of drainage, um, now this, was picked up in the update report uh, following comments from our flood risk office, uh, our, our flood risk manager, the lead local flood authority. Um, and as they've set out, they don't raise any objections to the proposal subject to conditions. Similarly, United Utilities also don't raise specific uh, objections. Uh, they, they just recommend conditions as well. So both uh, relevant authorities are, are happy with the development as proposed, subject to us receiving those details prior to the commencement of development, um, which you know, is, is, is standard as members will be aware for developments of this nature. Uh, so, so that issue can be addressed, but at the condition stage. Um, and then just one other point on access, whether Mr Jones might want to comment on this, I think it was mentioned briefly, um, but it, it's really, it's just to note that this, this particular site has been before the, the planning committee, not perhaps not these particular members, but the planning committee before. And I think on each occasion, the access was probably probably discussed. I think it's always been proposed to move it slightly further um, south towards Seven Sisters Lane. Um, and it was certainly shown on, on, on two of the previous proposals uh, and included as part of that application. Uh, uh, sorry, included as part of those applications. Um, and whilst those applications might have been refused, they were never refused on highways grounds, the access has always been accepted as, as being okay. Um, but as I say, whether Neil just wants to add a bit more on the access, uh, just for his information. Well, that's all for me for now. Thank you, Chair. If you could just stay on uh, for a second, Paul, I, I have a, a question I'd just like to clarify on behalf of members. It's, it's around this issue of, of um, potential infill development. Uh, whilst we clearly can't uh, can't seek to anticipate any future proposals that may come forward, is is my understanding correct that if there were such proposals for infill in future, I'm not speaking about household extensions. I'm speaking about potentially building extra houses in gardens, etc. They would need to be subject to, and they would be subject to independent ap applications in their own right, which would need to be considered separately in future. That's exactly the case, yes, that they'll be treated independently and assessed on their particular merits at that time. Thank you very much. Um, a couple of questions, um, so I'll take them both and then come back to you. Uh, so firstly, Councillor Harewood, please. 
-hmm. And you're just on mute at the moment, Councillor Howard. That's it. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, can you see me at all? We can see and hear you. Please go yes. ahead. Um, I know that um, Mr Wakefield talked about um, the exits and entrances, but um, have we um, any report of this accident black spot? Have we got a report on the number of accidents or deaths or whatever at this junction? Because um, that came up, as uh, Mr Wakefield said, different and the councillor said different. Have we got any report on what may have happened in the past uh, uh, as it is now um, set out and it, ha and, and it had been? Have we got a report on that at all? Thank you, Councillor Howard. I'll invite uh, Mr Jones to come in on that in a moment, uh, but I'll take <laughs> Councillor Puddicombe's question first. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm not sure there's any point in asking my question, but I, I will. I mean, uh, Mr. Wakefield um, addressed it in the opening remarks there, and um, you also addressed it in your question, Chair. But so, can Mr. Wakefield advise me? Have I got to look just at this application today and ignore the parish council's concerns about infill applications in the future? Thank you, Councillor Puddicombe. Councillor Dean, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, um, I, I, I've heard it, uh, Mr Wakefield say that he hasn't got any exact figures, but I wonder, I, I'm very uh, conscious of this um, uh, green belt issue and the difference, if there is any really, between this application and the one that's already approved. Uh, does Mr Wakefield have a feel for what the difference is in terms of height and massing compared to the um, existing application that has been approved. Uh, I'm not asking for exact figures, but uh, are we talking a slight change or a large change? Thank you, Councillor Dean. Councillor Findlow, please. Thank you, Chairman. If we assume for a moment these 10 proposed houses were built, and there was an application for one or more infills, I guess it would be likely to be approved. Would Mr Wakefield be likely to approve such an application in those circumstances? My experience is the answer looking at other properties and other sites, uh, uh, I'm afraid, is likely to be in the affirmative. Thank you, Councillor Finlow. I suspect we're inviting the officer to speculate about an application of which he, neither he nor we have seen. Uh, but anyway, Councillor Smetham, and then I'll go back to the officers. Councillor Smetham. Yes, thank you. Apologies. Um, my screen just changed. I wanted to, I don't want to preempt the highways uh, response, but I'm going to. Uh, I've just uh, during the discussion, uh, during the speakers um, presentations, I, I took a look at the crash map when it was raised. There was a fatal accident some very a number of years ago. This is between uh, 20, um, 2001 and 2019. I do remember that fatal accident it was a lorry that crashed into the wall. Uh, but there are three other slight accidents in that time frame. So there are very few apart from the very sad fatal accident that I can see on crash map. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Smitham. So I'd now like to uh, invite our highways officer, Mr Neil Jones, to just address the questions that have been raised in respect to uh, entrance and, and access and also accident history at this location. Good morning, um, members. Um, I think the the Seven Sisters Staggered Crossroads is a separate matter. Um, we've, as Cheshire East Highways, looked at this for a, a number of years to see what measures we can do uh, to resolve that. But it is, a, in this case, a separate matter. This access is slightly north of that junction. Um, and it's been there for some time. There's no accidents uh, we could find that were re reported for the use of this particular access. So we see that as a separate matter. Um, 
just to remember, as um, Paul Wakefield has actually said this, is that we've actually looked at this access before in a number of our applications and members have approved this access. It's in the same location as previously shown. So that has been approved. I think, and the main thing I think for members to consider here is that this site was a garden centre. And admittedly, it didn't have a, a great deal of traffic associated with it, but if it comes back as a commercial development, Uh, so if it comes back as a commercial development um, for a garden centre or any other commercial development, I think it falls into use class E, which allows a lot more other uses now, then I'm sure residents wouldn't want a commercial development here with more traffic than the 10 residential units proposed. So I think that's the major issue to think about is we're going to have less traffic uh, from 10 dwellings in a commercial development. So I think um, for it's beneficial from a highway point of view. Thanks, members. Thank you, Mr. Jones. I now invite uh, Mr. Wakefield to come back on the other questions that were posed by members. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, in terms of Councillor Puddicombe's question, yeah, well, yes, in, in, in short, yeah, all, all we can do at this, this moment, all members can do at this moment in time is assess the application that is before us. Um, and assess that on its particular merits, as, 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 as the chairman referred to. Future applications will be dealt with uh, separately at that particular time and on their own, own merits. Um, and then in terms of Council of Finlow, the likelihood of it of, of an infill application to be approved, it, yeah, it, it's impossible to say. As I outlined previously, infill development in villages is, is not inappropriate development in the green belt so the principle potentially exists there for a future application to be considered against um, but it's um, it, it's limited infill so you know that there are it, it's not a, a carte blanche if you like for any any development any infill development to come along there are there are restrictions and you know it, it depends on the particular merits of each case that, and and that's as good as I can say unfortunately. Thank you Chairman. Thank you Mr Wakefield. So I would like to um, now move to the debate. I'm, I'm sorry Councillor Dean would you like to ask a question and then um, we'll move to the debate. Um, and now I did ask the question whether or not um, Mr Wakefield had a feel for the change in mass and height compared to the already approved application and I don't think he's addressed that. Mr Wakefield do you like to come back in on that? Yeah apologies it wasn't a deliberate um, trying to avoid the question <laughs> I, I, um, I didn't note it down. Um, my feel is that it's, it's generally similar um, in that I, I'm, I'm just looking at the because the out, the outline application, um, it was only matters of layout and scale that were approved. That when you, when you sort of drill down, the the, the the scale itself is is it's there, but it's the, the information. There's not a lot of information there. So I'm I'm looking at a sectional drawing, um, and it, it it shows sort of slight changes in land levels. Um, but if you take you know one particular property at the end of that sectional drawing if you, if you measure from the ground level as proposed to the to, to the top of the dwelling then the height is is about 5.5 meters so again it's it's similar to what's currently being proposed other dwellings uh, appear to be slightly sunken and so that their, their sort of true height against the ground level as shown is is less at about 4.8 meters so but overall it it, it appears of a, 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 a similar scale. The, the layout has been shown as part of the presentation from the approved scheme to the proposed. That that is, is very similar in its format as well. And so that 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 that's my general feeling um, that it's it's similar in scale. I mean, as I say, obviously the, that's that whilst that's a material consideration, the key test is 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 the the change from the existing and the proposed. Um, I'm st I've still not quite managed to find the, the volume figures, but in terms of the floor space, I think that's actually set out in the report. Um, so bear with me on page 
Yeah, so the footprint um, of the residential development. So the existing garden centre has a footprint that measured externally of, of about 2,695. Um, and the proposed dwellings have footprints of 1,271 square metres. Uh, and then in brackets, it says 1,300 square metres on the consented scheme. So, um, so again, so whilst there might be some changes uh, to the heights compared to the consented scheme, there is a slight reduction in terms of the footprint of the buildings as well. Uh, and that's on page 19 of the report. So I hope that helps. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Does that address the question, Councillor Dean, for you? Uh, it does. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, I've got Councillor Paul Thindlow, please. Yes, just for the avoidance of doubt, as this was previously mentioned, on condition 13, it is possible to extend that from extensions and outbuildings to embrace new properties. Is it, please? Mr Wakefield. Yeah. Well, new properties themselves wouldn't, can't be erected under permitted development as such. Um, so the barn could, put, yeah, just the, just reminding myself of the of permit development allowances. You can, the barn could, once converted to offices, could potentially be um, changed to a dwelling at some point in future, but the erection of a new dwelling would be subject to a planning application. So is it necessary to change the wording of 13? Uh, if, if members had concerns about the barn being a dwelling as opposed to offices, then if you know if what if there were planning reasons to, to, to do that and members have those concerns, then we could alter um, alter the condition in that way, but but that that's it really. Um, but I'm not sure what members' concerns would be over you know the barn being a, a dwelling as opposed to an office. Um, I'll, I'll leave that to the debate. Thank you, Mr Wakefield. I would now like to move to that debate and uh, indeed perhaps hear whether members do indeed have uh, have concerns in relation to the, the outbuilding. Um, I'm trying to think who is the, the closest ward member. It's probably Councillor Dean. Uh, so would you like to kick off with the debate, please? Um, yes, my, my view of this application um, is that we, we, have, I, we have spent and I, I've been on this committee while it's happened a long time looking at applications on this site and we eventually uh, consented a scheme some time ago. My concerns about this particular application uh, were fired up by the um, Parish Council's comments uh, and I'll just read one. When comparing drawings of the previous application to the current one, it can be seen that the new scheme will have a greater and more substantial impact on the openness of the green belt. But when I asked one of the uh, gentlemen from the Paris Council um, to quantify that, he couldn't. Um, the applicant has expressed that there would be a slight change. He talked about chimney uh, and about a square metre of extra um, uh, uh, non-openness, if you like. Um, and also, um, the officer Paul Wakefield has described that the, uh, the new, the new um, application uh, built form as very similar to the one that is being uh, that was that was already consented and indeed has come up with with the, the fact that the area is slightly smaller than the consented scheme so I am now satisfied that the uh, uh, increased effect on openness if there is one at all is acceptable I'm also, I've also been convinced by uh, Mr. Jones uh, on the uh, access issue and also it appears that the concerns about the drainage have already been addressed, even though I haven't yet seen the new, uh, the new, drainage, the new drainage proposals which are called for by condition. So my view is that um, this scheme is, is similar enough to the already approved scheme for us to approve it, but I'm more than happy to listen to other people's point of view before I make a, a, a proposal. Thank you, Councillor Dean. Councillor Howard, please.
Uh, uh, thank you. Um, I, I, my own, uh, I think it was a fear rather than substance. Because um, uh, it goes to show how uh, uh, there was not e e enough um, uh, uh, all alleviation of that fear, but I cannot see any reason to refuse this application. And uh, while I will listen to debate, I, I would like to say I would second Councillor Dean's approval of this application. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hayward. However, it hasn't been formally proposed yet. It, it may be, but it hasn't been so oh, Sorry, so sorry. So sorry, I thought you did. No, OK. Uh, Councillor Nick Mannion, please. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I'm... Um, of, um, of, I suppose a veteran of this application, this site, along with your, yourself and Councillor Dean and Councillor Harewood, and have, since the the, uh, the original scheme back in about 2016-17 was refused, uh, I've read the report, I've uh, I've listened to the uh, the discussion, and I, I am prepared to make a uh, proposal. I think we should accept the officer's recommendation. But again, there are there are issues where I think perhaps we need to look carefully and, we, and I'll be guided in this on the wording of the conditions, especially with regard to issues such as permitted development, etc. But I am prepared to propose that we accept the officer's recommendations and uh, I'm happy to listen to any strengthening of the conditions that members may suggest. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Manny. And just to clarify on page 28, the removal of permitted development rights um, is there as uh, condition number 13 already. Um, if it is felt that that needs to be strengthened equally, I'd be interested to hear. Uh, Sorry, Chair, I was specifically re relating to the barn, yeah. uh, the future of the barn. Sorry, so they made myself clearer. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Councillor Quiddicombe, please. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chair. I'm, I'm not as long in the tooth as some councillors here. Um, so this is the first time that I've looked at this uh, at this this site. Um, and on first reading through the application, I, I quite liked it. I think it looks looks attractive. <coughs> the way the uh, the houses are going to be built and the general design of them. As Mrs. Brickhouse said, it's a brownfield site and it's redevelopment, not um, conversion. And I think the concerns regarding access and drainage have been addressed. Um, I, I, I remain um, sympathetic to the parish council's concerns about infill in the future. Uh, but as Mr Wakefield uh, do understand this, that we are, we are looking at this application here now and would have to look at any future applications appropriately and no doubt the parish council will take a strong view on those um so as things stand i would be happy to uh, second councillor mannion's uh proposal and i wouldn't have any any concerns about the barn so i would be happy with condition 13 as it stands thank you councillor puddicum councillor dean and then councillor mcfarland yeah. okay can i just agree with uh councillor puddicum uh, that um, I'm, I'm also not concerned if the barn becomes a dwelling, uh, which would be allowed with the current wording of condition 13. I think that would actually probably make, would reduce the traffic in and out of the site. So um, just the, the, the extensions and outbuildings one, I, I'm quite happy with. Same with Councillor Pulika. Thank you, Councillor Dean. Councillor McFarlane, please, then Councillor Murphy. Ah, thank you, Chair. Yes, just a point which the Parish Council brought up uh, regarding um, three mature trees which are at the entrance uh, beside the office area uh, and the proposal is to fell them to get extra parking places. I, I'd just like to perhaps put that forward. Is, is this really what the Council is trying to uh, do at present? It seems a great shame if that uh, would have to happen and uh, I hope perhaps there may be a way to avoid that. Mature trees should be kept in situ if we possibly can. That's my feeling. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McFarlane. Councillor Murphy, please. Thank you, Chairman. I just want to clarify something on my uh, personal. Um, 
earlier on in the meeting, the uh, I got a flutter on the uh, connection I had, and I was cut out for two or three minutes. I didn't actually measure the number of minutes. Does that remove my right to vote on the matter? That unfortunately does mean that you've been unable to vote, Councillor Murphy. Right. Thank you for making that clear to us. That's what I thought. Thank you. Thank you. And the same thing happened actually to Councillor Braithwaite. Um, so I will bear that in mind when we when we go to the vote. Are there any other members wishing to contribute before I go back to our officer for final confirmation of any issues and the resolution itself? No. Nope. So thank you, Mr. Wakefield. Is there anything you wish to add at this point? Thank you, Chairman. Um, just yeah, just in terms of this this potential use of an office and permitted development, um, allowing it to be used as a dwelling in the future. Um, I've, I've just checked the regulations, and I mean, it, it, they won't be able to do it in this particular case. Um, because an office has to have been used as such on a specified day, which is uh, the 29th of May 2013, in order for it to be converted to a dwelling. Um, however, without reading the whole of the General Permitted Development Order, I, I'm trying to think whether, uh, as an A1 use, whether they could then you know, potentially convert as a lawful A1 use, um, whether there would be allowances in the future. But I think it just depends whether there's a big concern for members and what that concern is you know whether we need to be restricting it in that case i mean we could simply impose a condition restricting it to a b1 office the 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 barn to a b1 office use but we would need a reason to do that so if it was concerns about you know traffic although i think councillor dean pointed out it might even reduce traffic numbers if it was a dwelling um, impacts on neighbouring properties, character of the area, that sort of thing. If if there was a, a planning reason to do it, then we could just impose that condition that it it, it was uh, retained as an office, um, and then they would need planning permission to come, you know, to change its use in the future, anyway. Um, but we just need it's just to understand members' views on that, and um, we just need that planning reason to be able to do it. Um, in terms of the trees, I think yeah, I mean the loss of any trees is always unfortunate. Um, but I think in this particular case, as we as we saw in the landscaping scheme and in, within the key plans, there's quite a significant amount of, of replanting going on in terms of hedgerows and, and new trees along access roads and things. And so the, the development as a whole will have a very green feel to it. Um, so the, the key trees are those at the in the central section, which are protected by TPO, will be retained and will form a, a very attractive central feature to the development. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Wakefield. I'll take final contributions from councillors Findlow and Smetham and then go back to the proposer and seconder. Thank you. So, Chairman, how do we control? Uh, is it possible, if so, how to control future uh, infill style applications for new properties on this site, uh, separate from the barn office to dwelling scenario? They would they would be controlled through the standard planning process and be subject to separate planning applications, which would need to be determined independently of what is before us today. So can Mr Wakefield confirm there is no way that it can be controlled now? Um, I will ask him to come back in on that before we go to the vote. Councillor Smetham, please. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. I didn't detect any particular concern about uh, the office being changed to a dwelling. Uh, perhaps I'm wrong on that, but I didn't detect it. Uh, I think possibly it could be a, a, an improvement in some people's minds. So I don't I, and I agree with everything else that everyone said about this development. It seems rather delightful by a local architect. Thank you, Councillor Smitham. I would concur with that also. So I'll just go back to Mr Wakefield to uh, seek final clarification on the point raised by Councillor Findlow, which I tried to answer, but I'm not the planning expert here. Uh, but yeah, I, I can't say any more than you, Chairman, but yeah, so that there's no way we can control that at this point in time. And as you say, they'll be considered as and when they come forward on their merits. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Uh, so I'll just go back to the proposal and second, uh, uh, councillors Mannion and Puddicombe, happy with the original uh, resolution. Um, nothing you wish to add? No, I'm, I'm happy with the reassurances the officers shared with us to, uh, so I, again, to propose acceptance uh, with the conditions as listed. Thank you. Councillor Puddicombe? I'm also happy, Chair. Thank you very much. I'll now take the vote, um, which um, I will again uh, come to each member of the committee in alphabetical order and ask them to confirm their support or otherwise by stating for, against or not voting. Uh, the proposal is for approval, uh, proposed by Councillor Money and seconded by Councillor Puddicombe. Uh, Councillor Liz Braithwaite is unable to vote, having lost connection during the course of the debate, so we'll go First to Councillor Tony Dean, please. Uh, for Mr Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Paul Findlow, please. Well, we, can't, we can't control future developments, so I'm against. Thank you, Councillor Findlow. Councillor Howard, please. For Chair. Uh, Councillor Holland, please. Yes, I'm for Chair. Councillor McFarlane, please. For Chair. Thank you. Councillor Mannion, please. For Chair. Thank you. Councillor Brandon Murphy is unable to vote, having lost connection. So, Councillor Nicholas, please. For Chair. Thank you. Councillor Puddicombe. For. Thank you. Councillor Smitham. For. Thank you. And myself, Councillor Craig Brown, also for. So I will just tot up the numbers. I make mean, nine four one against two abstentions. Yeah. Yeah, two not voting. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, clearly carried with nine votes in favour of approval, one against, and two unable to vote. Uh, so thank you very much, members. We will now move on to the second application on today's agenda. This is item six and application number uh, two zero stroke one nine five seven M, the construction of a single storey one bed apartment within the grounds of number 16 George's Road East Poynton. Uh, Cheshire on behalf of Mr Chris Russell of QMS Developments. Could I invite our planning officer Mr Paul Wakefield to present the report for this application, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, there were no updates with this particular application, so I'll just uh, share my screen for the presentation. Sorry. Um, so, um, so yeah, 16, so hopefully you can see the, the location plan that we're just looking at now. Um, so 16 St George's Road East um, is located, uh, is edged in blue on this particular plan uh, with the application site to the north of it edged in red. Um, as you can see, there's an existing row of properties on George's Road East um, and this larger building here is, um, an existing care home and then properties on Bukesley Road as well that just uh, back for sort of face towards the, the rear of those elevations face towards the application site over these gardens um, here. Just to show it in a bit wider context, uh, it's very close to Point and Town Centre, this being Park Lane, the main uh, shopping street if you like in Pointon with the uh, Point and junction. And so, as you can see, very sustainable location, um, easy walking distance to the town centre and the facilities that are there. Now, as is set out in the uh, uh, in the agenda report, the uh, application site is allocated as existing open space in the Macclesfield Borough Local Plan. And, and just for information, this is the extent of that allocation. Um, as you can see, so th this is the area of open space. This area is within the, the grounds of uh, the Cedarwood Care Home. Uh, 
it's, it's just a landscaped area within their, their grounds. Then we've got the application site uh, that sort of fills this this area here at the end on the left hand side. And then the rest um, relates to, to gardens, as we'll see in the photographs uh, for the other properties along George's Road East. Um, the open space allocation, I think previously, again, as is set out in the report, the, the area used to be a, a series of privately owned allotments, um, which, as explained in the report, that's, that's changed over time. Uh, so, yeah, so just to look a bit of a closer aerial view, um, you can see, uh, so these are the properties on uh, George's Road East. And it's the rear of these properties that face towards this access access track here, access road. Um, <clears throat> but as you can see, the the the, the areas that form that, that open space allocation are largely laid to lawn. Um, a few domestic features you can see, such as these trampolines and things, um, another sort of domestic paraphernalia that we'll see in the photograph shortly. Uh, outbuildings as well, and, and parking areas provided for the for the dwellings on George's Road East. And this, this being the application site here. There was formerly, I think, a, a, a greenhouse and a shed that existed at the end of the site, which uh, are shown in the aerial photograph, but won't be in the photographs that are to follow. So George's Road East, when, this is a photograph viewed from Bukeley Road. It's, it's a bit of an odd arrangement in that George's Road East is, is well, there's the nameplate for George's Road East, and that's that's the the route uh, that it relates to, which is a pathway. Um, the vehicular access to the properties, as we saw on the overhead photograph, is down this track uh, on the right hand side um, between these properties on Bukeley Road and, and uh, this one here, as we'll see here. So this is the access track that um, serves the properties. As you can see, it is the rear of these properties on George's Road East. Um, but this is the main vehicle access for the properties and this is what will serve the proposed dwelling. So again, just looking, so this is with the application site um, or the end of the access track behind, looking back towards Bukeley Road. These are the properties on Bukeley Road at the end. And you can see the existing parking that takes place uh, within, uh, just off this, this access road. Then looking the other way, so the building in the in the background here is a Cedarwood care home, as I referred to previously, and then the one on the left hand side is 16 George's Road East, um, which is the sort of parent dwelling, if you like, of the application site, and it's their garden um, where the, the application site is located. Um, as you can see, they've got existing outbuildings there as well. This is an extension that I think is referred to within the report that where the, the design of the, of the of the new dwelling is is um, is based well what, what the design of the new dwelling is based on. Um, and then looking from the access road to the application, uh, you can just see the rear boundary by this what looks like new fencing uh, and the, the neighbour's garden area here. The properties on, on George's Road East also have gardens on the opposite side as well, not not quite as big as these, um, but uh, there are still garden areas there immediately adjacent to the dwelling, because as we saw, these areas are separated by the access road itself. Uh, but as you can see, it's, it's currently laid to lawn uh, and not much to, to speak about, really. Remnants of a greenhouse, I think, just uh, on the left hand side there. Uh, again, so looking within the site um, towards the care home, on the other side of the boundary, the western boundary, and back across the uh, the adjacent rear gardens, as you can see, we've got various swings and, and other things that relate to the domestic use of the of these areas, outbuildings, and then looking back, so you can just see the back, the rear of uh, number 16 George's Road East here. Um, just behind the van. And then these are images taken from Street View that just, just to show adjacent gardens really and how they're being used. Um, 
as we've said, they, they do have this, uh, well, a residential garden feel about them. Um, as you can see with the various domestic items. And then, so the proposed site plan, as we've seen, uh, 16 George's Road East uh, retains this, this sort of area, hard standing area to its, to its rear um, that is already there. Um, and also a small area of the garden um, to the north. But then, it, as we've said, it also has these other garden areas um, at, the, front, at the, the, the true front of the property, which is which face onto this uh, pathway uh, labelled George's Road East uh, at the front and the side as well. So it, it, it retains a, a reasonable amount of garden space for itself and provides adequate space for the new dwelling as well. Um, as we've said, and as is set out in the report, it's quite a contemporary appearance, the dwelling, uh, but it is single storey, uh, keeps its, its height quite um, quite low, uh, minimising its, its sort of visual impact, given that it, it, it is sort of tucked in the far corner <clears throat> away from the access road and, and at the end of the access road as well. Um, it, it's, it, it is clearly a, a subordinate structure um, compared to the, the existing houses on George's Road East. Uh, and then there's another photograph just of the existing extension at 16 George's Road East, uh, which where the design originates from. Um, so it may, you know, it's like to have more of an appearance of building serving this particular property, given its its form and scale that we're, that we're looking at. Uh, and that's it, Chairman. So for the reasons set out in the report, it is recommended for approval. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Wakefield. We have uh, three members uh, registered to speak on this item, so I'd like to now invite the first of those, Councillor Just Saunders, who is the ward councillor. Councillor Saunders, you'd like to turn on your camera and microphone. And uh, you have five minutes. Please begin when you are ready. Thank you very much, Chair. Well, first of all, I will be very brief, um, not for the reasons of my colleague earlier, but because I've been kicked out of this meeting four times already because of connectivity issues. So if I'm kicked out again, I do apologise. So I'll be very succinct. Um, this site lies within an area allocated as existing open space and therefore should be treated similarly to playing fields and it should certainly be treated differently to that of neighbouring gardens. It's essentially backland development, that's what it is. And it has not been shown to be surplus to requirements. The proposal is for a bungalow, whereas the remaining houses on this little um, ginnel are traditional terrace buildings, so it's completely out of character. But one of the main things that I want to bring up, and it is very pertinent since it was one of the items discussed at Cabinet yesterday, is flooding. There's been no reference to flooding. If you had the report of yesterday's Cabinet in front of you, you would see on page 42 of the flood report the risk of flooding in that area. Um, Park Lane flooded, the surrounding roads flooded, and it gives um, in the report a surface water flood risk which is considerable. It is not just um, these houses, it's also around Cedarwood as well. And I would suggest to you that building on open, um, open space would take away some of that mitigation of flood risk. Currently, Vernon School playing fields are often not usable because of the amount of surface water there. And you're gonna be building, as I say, on open space. Thank you very much. That's the extent of what I want to say. Thank you, Councillor Saunders. Are there any questions from members, please? Uh, yes, Councillor Mannion and then Councillor Smetham, please. Um, thanks, Josh. Um, it's, as you say, it's listed as open space, but reading the report and looking at the presentation, would you say this was a better description of this was gardens? Because it doesn't appear to be accessible to members of the public. It does appear to have been over time, and I, I accept it might have been allotments in the past, and, and my support for the allotments movement is on public record. 
but it does appear to have over the, over time to have um, uh, tra uh, transformed into uh, effectively um, divided up private gardens. Is that the case? I think it is, and my colleague on Point and Town Council will probably be able to give you more detail of that because he's lived in the area a lot longer than I have and has been on the Town Council for a lot longer than I have. Um, but that does not take away from what I've just said. It's essentially backland development. Yeah. We had a huge debate on flooding yesterday. Um, if you've got the report from yesterday's cabinet in front of you, Nick, you would actually yeah. see page 42 of that report and it's in glorious technicolour, the risk of surface water flooding there. And to build on open space, and these times at the moment, when we know that there's a risk of flooding, I think is very foolish. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Howard, please. Yeah. We can't hear you at the moment, Councillor Howard. You're on you're on mute, Councillor Howard. That's Thank better. you very much. Um, I do appreciate um, the uh, councillor, um, councillor Saunders, but uh, on page 39, that has been addressed. That has been addressed now as they, uh, um, they withdrew their objection. So, Limited. so that has been addressed. And a one bedroom bungalow, I don't know that, um, Councillor Howard, is this a yes, question? Yes, that, that it has been addressed. Would you say that has been addressed? No. That's my, that's my question. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't. That's why we had the Section 19 flood report. No, I don't think it has been addressed at all. I think it demonstrates, and I refer you to page 42 of said report, which outlines the risk of flooding in that area. So, no, I don't. Um, we are actually having a task and finish into um, mitigation for flooding in Poynton um, because we do know that there are risks of flooding. We have climate change in our midst and I personally do not think that it is wise to build on an area of open space in an area which is at risk of flooding and that is not my report, thank that was the report that was produced. I answered the question Councillor Saunders, thank you. Can I move on to Councillor Smetham please? Thank you. Um, in my theme was the same, but I will ask my question of Councillor Clark um, after uh, we finish this part. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Councillor Smetham. Uh, Councillor Nicholas, please. Yeah. Thank, can I just ask? Um, you're saying it's the risk of flooding. Last year, during all the floods, did this area flood? Yes. Just the, the, I don't know. I gardens. don't know if that particular garden flooded. But Park Lane, which is adjacent, you've just seen that on your thing. That was completely impassable. It was under feet of water. But not that particular area. I don't. Well, it is that area, isn't it? Well, okay, so, that, that particular okay. garden. OK, so I can't tell you about the particular garden, but I can tell you that Bookley Road was flooded and I can tell you that Park Lane was flooded. Um, I didn't personally go to those particular houses, but you know, the, I'm just saying that the roads adjacent to them flooded. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. I don't see any further members wishing to ask a question. So Councillor Saunders, oh sorry, Councillor Findlow at the last moment. <laughs> yeah, please go ahead. Are there, are there similar plots, if this application were successful, in the vicinity, which uh, could copy a president if established here? Uh, I, I think that's difficult for me to say. I'm not, a, you know, a, a planning expert, but obviously the adjacent houses do have long gardens. That's all I can say, because essentially this is back land development. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sons. If I could now invite you to turn off your camera and microphone and I'll invite the next speaker. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Uh, could I now invite then Council, uh, Town Councillor Lawrence Clark, who is representing Poynton Town Council. Uh, Councillor Clark, you have five minutes. Please begin when you're ready. Uh, hello, can you hear me? 
We can hear you and see you, please. Thank you. Me. Right, uh, I'd like to endorse all the comments that Councillor Joss Saunders made. Uh, this land is shown in the development plan as open space. As the officer so correctly points out, it's not been demonstrated as surplus to requirements and not nor replaced by equivalent or better provision elsewhere. Uh, this land was, I believe, used as private allotments, but gradually over the years uh, it, uh, it has been used as gardens for the nearby houses. They only have small gardens at the front. They're curious houses having delivered leaflets around there. The front doors are at the back. That's where the letterboxes are. Uh, the gardens supposedly at the front, which face the former Vernon Infant School, um, are very small. So it will take away a large chunk of this house's garden. Uh, it's a bad precedent, in my view. If this one goes, we run the severe risk of certainly the other gardens uh, next to it, um, the side part of the open space which is now used as gardens, also being built on. There are a lot of large, long, thin gardens in Poynton, this part of Poynton. Uh, it's a bad precedent, and there's many similar sites in, Mac in towns like Macclesfield and Bollington, parts of Disley. Uh, I could see this um, catching on, building on the uh, back gardens of terraced houses, the long, thin back gardens of terraced houses which we have in this area. And I'd certainly like to endorse what's been said about the flood risk. I went to the Vernon Infant School, which is literally the other side of George's Road, uh, George's Road East, and then Vernon Junior School. It's now just one school. And the playing fields were regularly waterlogged for getting on for half the year. They couldn't be used. There's endless problems with waterlogging and people in neighbouring houses complaining water's coming off the school playing fields into their gardens. So I'm quite sure this land, this land will be waterlogged. As uh, my colleague said, Park Lane was literally flooded in 2016. Uh, I remember wading across it. It was about six inches of water pouring all the way down it. I didn't see obviously walk down and inspect this particular garden, but uh, I would be astonished if it wasn't underwater at the time. And every time you build a house on a piece of open land, that increases the amount of water runoff. It must do, logically. And I should add, by the way, a specific point. It says in the officer's report that the applicants have said following the receipt of a flood risk assessment from the applicant. I can't see that on the council's website. On the planning page for this for this application, I can see no sign of a flood risk assessment. But what I will say is the flood risk maps that the Environment Agency produce are a joke. They list large parts of Poynton as only having a risk of a flood every thousand years, yet it flood these areas flooded twice in three years. Those, those maps are a joke. They can't be relied upon. They're absolutely out of date. So I would urge councillors to uh, reject this application it's contrary to the development plan. I can't see any point in having a development plan if we just ignore it. And it also will pose an increased flood risk and also set a bad precedent. And can I add one further specific point, which isn't addressed in the report. The house is very close to the car park. It doesn't actually abut it. It's very close to the car park for the Farmer's Arms pub, which is effectively a restaurant now. It's often busy at night. There's no mention of any possible noise from the pub disturbing any hypothetical residents of this property. I'm surprised the environmental health officer hasn't addressed that in his report, but he doesn't seem to have it doesn't seem to have crossed anyone's mind. So that's a final point uh, of concern. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Clark. Uh, I can see that Councillor Harewood would like to ask a question, and then Councillor Smitham. You're on mute, Councillor Harewood, at the moment. Uh, I would just like to ask. Um, what is the assumption or what is the advice on surplus to requirements? How do you evaluate what that this house is surplus to requirements? Thank you. Well, my personal view is that this is a perfectly, this land is now being used as a garden. I don't think it's surplus at all. Uh, it's not a piece of wasteland which uh, has no, it's not like a redundant factory or something, which is what I would interpret brownfield land as. It's a garden, it's been used as a garden, and there is absolutely no reason to uh, build on it. I don't think it's surplus to requirements at all. Thank you. Councillor Smetham, please. Thanks. Um, the flood risk one designation uh, does lead to some confusion, I've noticed, but have you seen this particular plot of land flooded over the past? Few years, please, Councillor. 
I haven't seen this particular piece of land flooded, but I have seen with my own eyes Park Lane, which is literally just a few yards away from it, under six inches of water. I've even waded across it and I've seen Bulkley Road flooded and I've seen the I've seen the playing fields of the Vernon infants and junior schools with standing water on them. So uh, over many years I've seen that. So I would be astonished if this land has not flooded and in the sense of having standing water on it in times of high rainfall, though I haven't seen it personally um, because it's not somewhere that you have to go particularly there to see it. You can't walk past it, but that's no argument. You know, Poynton's got uh, allotments up Coppice Road and you, you can't see them from the road. Nobody suggests they should be built on. Thank you. Councillor Mannion, please. Yeah, um, three times you referred to the phrase public open space, and but you've also referred to the fact that to their gardens, this 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 area. So realistically, what you're saying is what may be on a map, and using your analysis, using using parallel when you say the environment agencies maps are out of date. Is the designation of this land as open space now out of date? Because effectively, if I, as a member of the public, went down that Ginnell Way, would I be able to access that land? Because it does appear to have all have been fenced off as private gardens these days. Is that the case? Well, my understanding is the land was never public open space, like Point and Park is, say, but it was private open space, like, say, Point and Sports Club is. Point and Sports Club. Sports Club is zoned as open space, but it's private. You can't just walk in it unless you remember. Right. And the, my understanding is this land was private open space in the form of allotments. It wasn't somewhere, it was open space in that it was open, but it wasn't public space in that it belonged to a public authority or anybody could walk over it whenever they wanted. So it's always been private, but it's always been open. It's now open as a garden, as gardens rather than as allotments, but it is still open space. It's still used to grow things, even if it's just grass and flowers. But what you're saying is it's it's not a single piece of uninterrupted open space, as the Point and Sports Club uh, field is. Uh, what you say, what you're accepting, it's, it's now effectively been subdivided into gardens. It has been subdivided into gardens, but it's still open. OK, I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any further questions, members? Nope. In that case, Councillor Clark, if I could invite you to turn off your camera and microphone now. Thank you. Uh, but please feel free to remain in the meeting. And I will invite our third speaker, Chris Russell, who is the agent for the applicant. Mr. Russell, you have three minutes. So please begin when you're ready. Can you all hear me OK? We can both hear and see you. Thank you. Right. Well, firstly, uh, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity. I'm indeed the agent, but also the applicant. So I am one and the same. I am the resident uh, in the house. Um, I work from home. I'm an architect. I work from home now uh, following redundancy in March due to, to the pandemic. Uh, and we've lived in that. We've been in Poynton, myself and my family, since 1982, the last six years of which we've been in that house. Um, our children have grown up and left, and now some are returning. Uh, we're also uh, are entering that stage of starting with, with grandchildren. So that's the reason that we need the additional space. So that, that is the personal circumstances that has driven this application. Uh, we are not selling either house. So that was the first thing. The second thing is I want to endorse the case officer's report fully. Uh, we work very closely with the case officer during the application and in doing so did provide a full flood risk assessment. The LFA, uh, the, the flood team did initially object. That was through lack of information. We provided a flood risk assessment that was provided and that application was withdrawn. So they are satisfied that flooding is, is, is dealt with. Just on that point, uh, it is a small building uh, and uh, most of the roof is going to be a grass turf roof with the specific intention of limiting surface water runoff. Uh, I'm an architect with particular interest in environmental sustainability and ensuring minimum impact uh, on the environment is part of the design. The other point of issue is the open space issue. The Kemble report deals with this. I'll just add a little bit of anecdotal background. 
the, the dead miners' properties sold by the mining company in 1948. When they were sold in 1948, eight slivers of land were allocated to the eight houses. And what has been indicated, uh, two of those have ended up in the uh, cedarwood and therefore been developed as part of that. And we happen, by happenstance, to be the owners of the ones which were originally allocated uh, to number uh, 10 and number 12. Furthermore, talking to neighbours, uh, we have anecdotal evidence that all the land uh, allocated as open space has been have been enjoyed, as you can see on the photographs, as private gardens for over 20 years. So 70 year plus years, they've been individual uh, uh, slots of land and for over 20 years gardens. Interestingly, the point and neighbourhood plan uh, doesn't no longer allocate this as open space and therefore is uh, in con uh, contradiction to the Macclesfield Borough Local Plan, which, as has been pointed out, still does. Uh, we think that the reason it wasn't taken out due to it wasn't reviewed due to all the roadworks that were going on. <laughs> so, um, I'm happy Mr. to answer Russell, I'm afraid that's the, the end of your speaking time. Yeah, and that's fine. Happy to answer any questions. Yes, thank you. Are there any questions, members, to Mr. Russell? Yes, Councillor Smetham, please. Thank you. Has the uh, grassed area ever been flooded? So um, there obviously have been the two incidents of uh, flooding um, that have been referred to and we were the residents in both of those occasions. Uh, the water uh, runs downhill, surprisingly, from High Point and does run into Bolton Road, does run down Park Lane and does run down, and it did run down, uh, the trap as it's referred to. Um, and, and into our garden, uh, through our garden, and into Cedarwood beyond. Uh, whilst that land looks um, flat, it isn't indeed. It, it, I don't know if um, you can see the photograph again, but the back end of the garden, where the garden is proposed, is uh, about uh, 18 inches uh, higher than, than the lower area. So it partly flooded as the water passed the garden and passed on into Cedarwood. So water did come through the garden. The area that the house is proposed was, was on, remained on dry land through both those events. Can I add to that? Thank you, Chairman. Yes, please do, Councillor Smellen. Just uh, to ask what you propose to do about the, uh, the water and so on. I see there is uh, quite a bit of information in the uh, the document, but um, if you could just explain to us what yeah, indeed. About, so apart from the, the sedum roof, of course. Yeah, sorry. So what the you saw the photograph of the existing extension on the side. You may have noticed there was like a, a Cheshire brick plinth uh, with then uh, oak posts and cladding above that. Now that what that does um, is makes the extension level through with the main house. So that was the reason for doing that. But we're following that design um, aesthetic so that there is some visual connection between the extension and, and the new the new property. But what that does do is take the ground floor about 600 millimetres uh, above the ground level. So um, that would be well above any thousand year flood levels. So we are taking the ground floor uh, above the outside ground level a bit and that neatly resolves the flood issue. Thank you. Councillor Puddicum, please. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, Mr. Russell, in your remarks, you stated that um, the site does not appear in the point and neighbourhood plan as list, list, list of locations to be um, open spaces. Did I hear you understand you correctly that that was an unfortunate omission because of roadworks that were happening at the time? Uh, my understanding is that um, they're clearly a gardens, have been gardens, shouldn't be allocated as open space. Uh, it's an anomaly. Um, and the chances were that it would have been taken out of open space, um, but they weren't accessible for reasons of the fun and games we all had when the roadworks were done in Poynton. So the, the site wasn't assessed, so it remained as open space and wasn't removed. That's my understanding uh, of the situation. Thank you. 
Thank you. And Councillor Liz Braithwaite, please. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, my question was about flooding and it's been answered. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Councillor Braithwaite. Any further questions, members? No. OK, thank you, uh, Mr. Russell. I'd like to now turn off the camera and my uh, okay, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. To remain in the meeting. Uh, Mr. Wakefield, any issues that have been raised there that you would like to come back on, please? Thank you, Chair. Just a couple of minor points. Um, yeah, in terms of flood risk, um, yeah, it, the, the site has flood previously. In fact, the flood risk assessment includes a photograph from July 2019 that does show, um, yeah, a lot of water on the site. Um, now, clearly that flood risk assessment has been considered by the uh, Lead Local Flood Authority. Um, and following their obje initial objection, and in light of that, um, they've not raised any, any issues. Um, as Councillor Hale pointed out, the flood risk matters are addressed on page 39 of the report. Um, again, subject to conditions related to the land levels, which are which are elevated in this particular case. Um, uh, sorry, the, the the floor levels are elevated, um, uh, and also to uh, require a, a detailed um, drainage strategy to be provided as well. Um, then, in terms of the Batland development issue, I think again, I mean that's that's addressed in the report, and particularly in terms of compliance with policy HOU 15, the Point and Neighbourhood Plan. It's it's addressed in a, in a bit of detail there, um, and you know as, as we've, we've set out in that in that report again at the top of page 37, it's it's quite an unusual arrangement for the for dwelling, um, in that they've got this sort of front and back arrangement um and the, with the main vehicle access being from the back um but that's that does that's there and that exists and that will also serve the dwelling so it, it's it has got access from the highway um as as the existing uh, as, as the existing dwelling house as well um and then in terms of precedent i think that was an issue that, that came up um by one of the speakers i think in this obviously in this particular case as we've said before that you know, this, this this particular plot is located at the end of the access track, um, and it it's a, a very sort of low lying building. It's tucked up in the corner, um, and it in terms of it its impact on this particular application, it's it, it's acceptable for the reasons that we've set out in the report. As as with the previous application, you know, as and when future applications come forward, if they do use this as an example, then we will assess those on their particular merits. But I think none of none of any future applications will have that the particular characteristics of this this site so as we've said it, it will they will be assessed as and when they come forward um and then oh yeah sorry just coming back to flood risk again i think as as has been noted it's in flood risk one which yeah is a, is a low risk of flooding but i think the lead local flood authority make specific reference to their own mapping system which accounts for that uh, um the, the the terrible floods that happened back in, in 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 july 2019 and other events as well uh and it and it was flagged up on their system as being an area of potential concern and that's what led to this the flood risk assessment being submitted um so the evidence that the lead local flood authority have used to assess this application it is up to date um and I, yeah uh and that's that's all i'd say for now thank you chairman Thank you, Mr. Wakefield. Uh, members, are there any points of clarification that you would like to seek uh, from our officers? Ms. Uh, Councillor Mannion, please. Yeah, I've seen um, some rather flexible definitions of open space. So, when, so uh, Mr. Wakefield, when is open space not open space? Can you give us a quick um, 30 second definition? Thank you, Councillor Mannion. Any further questions before I go back to Mr. Wakefield? Councillor Findlow, please. Did I hear it said that there's a photo in existence showing water on the site? Is that amongst our papers or somewhere? I haven't seen it. Thank you. We'll see clarity on that one. And Councillor Holland, please. Thank 
Councillor Holland, are you with us? Sorry, my apologies. I forgot to turn off mute and the camera. Um, yeah, I was just curious of the terminology used for the um, application, which is apartment. An apartment seems to be a collective of um, buildings. I just wondered why it's apartment. I would have thought it would be a bungalow. Just curious. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Holland. Any further questions, members? And Councillor Fendler again, please. Is the proposal uh, suitable? No. How does the proposal relate to the main building? Is it supplementary to the main building or to be entirely separate from the main building? Thank you, Councillor Findlow. Mr Wakefield, would you like to come back on those, please? Ancillary was the word I should have used, Chairman. Ancillary too. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, just to address that point, first of all, no, there's, I, I think from the way in which Mr Russell explained it, it did sound like it would be an ancillary building um, to the main dwelling, but as, as the application has been submitted, there's no suggestion that it, it would be an ancillary structure to 16 George's Road East, it, it's a freestanding um, dwelling in its own right and not not tied to the existing house. So it could be sold off separately? It could be potentially, yes. Thank you. Um, then, yeah, on a similar note, in terms of the description that Councillor Holland raised, yes, um, yeah, it, it, I agree. It's, a, it's an interesting <laughs> description. Um, but that's what's been put forward. But I think, yeah, whether it whether it's described as an apartment or a a bungalow or a, a dwelling, I think it, it is what it is. It's a one bedroom freestanding um, structure dwelling, if you like. Um, but yeah, no, I agree. It's a bit of an odd because you it, it's not what you envisage to be an apartment um, in the true sense of the word. Um, in terms of the photograph, uh, it's on the. On, I'd like to show it to you, but I don't think I'm going to be able to um, in that I could try and get on the council's website uh, to show it to you uh, of the flooding that did take place in 2019, but I'm not sure previous I've, I've previously tried using websites and sharing my screen and it's not worked. So it's up to you, Chairman. I can I can try and do it. Um, but uh can I just ask Mr. Waitfield, do you have it to hand or do you need to search for it? I would need to search for it. So, so in that case, what I will do is invite members to open the debate. And if you manage to track it down and are able to show it before we reach the end of the debate, uh, that's fine. OK, great, thanks. And then just just one final point. Um, when is open space not open space? Uh, <laughs> good question. Um, well, this is open. From a purely planning point of view, which is what we're looking at, this this is exist this is identified as existing open space. So, and and that's how it's been treated in the report. It is identified as existing open space. But I think, as the report sets out, we've gone through the the the, the benefits of that area being allocated as an open space, and whether there is truly any public benefit to it being there in terms of its physical. I think you know you, you picked up on the fact that it's not physically accessible. Uh, to the public and similarly in visual terms that you know again we've outlined it in the report but it's down this this access track um, and so in terms of the wider sort of visual public benefits of open space that you know is often often the case um, as as, uh, as as members you know may remember I think it was a previous meeting we had a similar sort of issue um, Whereas there were potential vis visible benefits to that open space because it was probably visible from from Sainsbury's car park in Wilmslow, but in this case, it's down an access track. It's tucked up in the, at the very far corner. Um, the visual benefits, public benefits, just aren't really there. So this is open space. Uh, we're not hiding behind that, and clearly that conflict with that policy weighs against the proposal. But I think for the reasons that we've set out, including the you know slight conflict with um the point in neighborhood plan in terms of them identifying the specific areas of open space that should be protected we we feel that on balance the allocation um on this particular site uh is it, not something that should stand in the way of this particular plan application uh, thank you chairman 
Okay, thank you, Mr. Wakefield. Uh, thank you, members. Uh, so I'd like to now move to the debate. Uh, could I have a volunteer to uh, to open the debate for us, please? Don't all shout at once. Um, I'm quite happy to. Um, thank you, okay. Councillor D. Yeah, I have to say I, I'm torn with this one. Um, on the one hand, I'm very keen to keep any open space, especially in a built up area like Poynton, open. Um, uh, and I'm also concerned about the flooding issue. Just one point on flooding. Um, the town councillor uh, made a comment that the environment, environment agency's flood maps were a joke. Um, and specifically because of the one in a thousand year uh, uh, allocation to this particular area. That, that unfortunately is, is old fashioned terminology and should, should no longer be used, but it still is used. One in a thousand years means 0.1% chance. So you could actually have a flood every year if you were just lucky with the, unlucky with the odds. 0.1% chance every year of a flood. Um, and also the maps are uh, predicated on the fact that every single watercourse and culvert is fully open, which was definitely not the case in Poynton. Um, so that made flooding more likely in Poynton, and that's what happened. Uh, but just to move on from that, I am concerned about the flooding. Um, to put a permanent structure on open space to solve what appears to be a temporary problem of returning children uh, doesn't seem to me necessarily the right thing to do. Um, but also, um, because it is small and because it's tucked away where it is, it's not a massive issue in terms of um, aspect for the rest of the people living in Poynton. So I'll be interested to see what other people think, especially anybody from the Poynton area. Thank you, Councillor Dean. Councillor Mannion, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I think the open space argument is uh, a red herring. The, uh, the, open space, uh, the open space is crisscrossed with um, private fencing, which is presumably anything up to two metres in height. And um, it's covered in hard standings as well, where, where people have um, created additional parking facilities for themselves. However, uh, there are two. So I think you know, I'm, I, I, I have no concerns on that particular issue. Where I have concerns is picking up on the um, the flood risk issue and the garden grabbing. You know, remember, remember, I think it was John Prescott who who started the campaign against garden grabbing, uh, but. There are there have been structures there in the past, you know, as as the obviously said, there are there's been um, like derelict sheds and chalets, etc., tucked away in the back corner. My one concern is, um, no matter how how little, will this exacerbate the the flood risk issues to the rest of the area, and also it will clearly set a precedent. Yes, this one is tucked away in the corner, but it would set a precedent along that row. And um, the motivation for, build, for building it is irrelevant. It's not a planning issue. It's the fact that what is proposed, we've got to look at. Um, I'm minded at the moment to go with the officer's recommendation, but I'm not prepared to move that yet until I've heard uh, contributions from the other members of the committee. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Manning. Councillor Fairwood and then Councillor Findlow, please. fear uh, rather than the substance of the councillors. This cannot, this development, development happens because there are needs for development. Uh, and, and, and that's the process. And this garden, this um, development does not seem to intrude upon the other houses around there. I am um, I'm satisfied that the flooding has been addressed as far as it can be addressed. It has been addressed as, and that was to me, in my opinion, was the main reason to look at the objections. Uh, things like garden grabbing and backland development are so what for what it is. It is their garden. It is not a public place. It's it's not a backland for 
for my 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 definition of backland, whatever that is. But as long as the flooding is not going to make things worse and it has been satisfied by you, the utilities, I cannot see an objection. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Howard. Councillor Smetham, please. Thank you. Uh, I'm still interested in the flood risk, um, but it is flood risk one, which is the lowest in the in the list. Um, there seems to have been some flooding there, as has been described, but flooding depends on its management, I would suggest. Um, recent flooding water was described as running away. So it's it's not beyond us, I don't think, to manage this this issue, even if it has increased over time. But it is flood risk one, so it's it is the lowest. Um, the other item about the back gardens and so on. Um, these are very the other strips of land are very narrow, and it would be quite difficult, I think, think to develop those individually. Uh, so I'm not terribly concerned about that one. <coughs> what we've probably got was already mentioned uh, is the housing need and local opposition on one hand and housing need and our obligation to provide sufficient homes in appropriate places in conjunction with our planning guidelines. So I'm I'm becoming, although it has been quite tricky to start with, I'm coming down on the side of approval on this one, but I'll leave it to, to hear what the rest say, say. Thank you. Councillor Findlow, please. Well, Chairman, whether you call it backland development or garden grabbing or whatever other terminology uh, you want to use, I'm not sure it's a desirable approach that we should uh, confirm and adopt. I would have been perhaps more sympathetic if this was uh, ancillary accommodation for a particular purpose, a granny flat is the phrase often used, but it's not. I think my previous question ascertained that in fact this is a, a, a commercial or has the potential to be a commercial proposition uh, whereby the land could be sold off separately uh, as a freestanding, uh, not apartment, bungalow I suppose, like terminology. Uh, and I'm not very keen on, on, on that as a, a manner of approach. But the main consideration must be the flooding. Having heard about what's gone on and what has actually happened nearby in Park Lane at the Environment Scrutiny Committee at great length, uh, anything, even on a de minimis basis, which uh, should uh, could and has the potential runoff, etc., to exacerbate the situation, is something we should definitely avoid. So I have significant reservations about this application. Thank you, Councillor Finlow. Councillor McFarland, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, similarly, the flooding is uh, is an issue that has been in the past and it's not going to go away. But I, I'm looking at comments and the points in neighbourhood plan and uh, from the point in town council. Um, they, they have council has given comments and answers to a couple of the, the planning policies on the neighbourhood plan side. But I, I, I'm of the belief that there should be some weight placed to what is in local neighbourhood plans and, and what the council, the local councils uh, put forward in the comments. So I'm, I'm looking at those comments and still considering the, the situation. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Smetham again, please. Just thinking a little bit further about this um, issue, even if it is a separate dwelling and it is sold on for profit, I don't think I don't think that's our particular remit here. It would provide another small property for someone in need. Thank you, Councillor Smotham. Uh, can't see anybody else's hand up at the moment, so I'll I'll throw in a few thoughts of my own on this. Um, uh, to be honest, a little bit nervous around uh, going for refusal on the basis of flooding because it seems to me that we, we could almost set a precedent here that there's no further development in Pointed due to the possibility of flooding. Um, I'm more convinced by the arguments around backland development. If, if this was a proposal in my ward, certainly um, our neighbourhood plan 
policies have been designed to uh, to try and address the issues around backland development. And I'm also concerned about AXA. We've shown a photograph during the slide presentation earlier on, um, and there are a number of refuse bins lined up alongside what seemed to be very, very narrow access. Now, for the properties that already exist, it appeared to me that although it might be their, their rear door rather than their front door that was accessible via a current uh, adopted road, whereas this property would only be capable of being accessed from an unadopted, very narrow uh, single track road. Um, and that does give me some concern in terms of how, how it's going to be accessed, uh, not necessarily by the refuse vehicles. I can see that they're collected from the end of the road, but how does a removal van, for example, um, access the site uh, to enable people to move in and uh, occasionally also, of course, to move out as well. So um, I'm very much on the fence on this one um, at the moment. Uh, Councillor Nicholas, I can see you'd like to uh, make a comment. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, I like everybody else, grave concerns about about flooding, and the fact is, it did flood last year, which obviously, you know, I think does um, have a big part to play in this. Um, and I would like to see that picture. Uh, I think without seeing seeing how, what the effects of that flood were, um, I would be going against this myself. So. Any any chance of seeing that picture? Have we, have we been able to find it? Thanks, Councillor Nicholas. Uh, Mr Wakefield, have you managed to uh, be successful in tracking it down yet? Uh, yes, I, I have. Um, and I, I will show it to you. But I just would like to say, um, I, I don't, what I don't want this picture to do is to be the determining factor on, <laughs> on a view on flood risk. Because this this is one snapshot in time, the floods in Poynton did happen, obviously, which we're not you know not hiding behind. But I think at the same time, it's just important to remember that the flood risk response has been by the council has been informed by us as the lead local flood authority, um, and these are the same people that we consult and plan applications who object when necessary as they did with this until we received this flood risk assessment which this photograph forms part of. Now they've clearly said that they've got no objections to the proposal in their technical opinion. Their response refers to their own mapping uh, system as well, not just the flood risk, <coughs> excuse me, maps of the Environment Agency which identify it as being in a low risk area. You know their mapping system shows it to be in a potentially um, high risk of, of surface water flooding. All these factors they're aware of, they're aware of this, they, they, they'll have seen this picture as well, um, but as I said, the, the, their ultimate conclusion and their, their advice is that they raise no objections subject to the conditions that we've recommended within the report. So in that context, I'll, um, I will show you this picture, um, which does form part of the, the flood risk assessment, if I can just share my screen can we see that yes we can yeah so clearly yeah it, that paints a picture um it's unequivocally flooded um you know that's in, in information that's come forward from the applicant they didn't need to provide that photograph no there's no other local evidence to to, to back that up from you know as we've heard from the town council and the ward councillor uh, or even neighbouring properties haven't um, backed that up either. But I think, what, as I say, what's important to know is this photograph forms part of a wider flood risk assessment that, as Councillor Smethen points out, is is um, the sort of basis for a managed approach to the flood risk on this particular site. And subject to those details coming in by condition and the, the floor levels being raised uh, and finalisation of the particular floor levels, uh, the lead local flood authority and United Utilities, uh, neither of them have uh, objections to the proposal. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Wakefield. There's been a couple of hands gone up during the uh, the showing of that photograph. So I think first was Councillor Murphy, and then Councillor Holland. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My uh, point is actually nothing to do with the photograph we've just seen. It's just that I'm inclined to support uh, the uh, refusal on the grounds of the, the point of town council stated represents an undesirable form of backland development. Now, the backland of development, I think, is very important that we don't encourage or or have a policy where it's okay to start putting up buildings in large or medium or even small sized gardens. What worries me about uh, the get, uh, voting against it on that particular line is the word undesirable. And is that significant when one's making these uh, um, uh, uh, judgments about the approval or not approval of, of an application? I have in mind uh, a garden, uh, somebody in, in Disley, who has constructed a very large garage in his back garden. Uh, he didn't need apparently planning permission. He has the garage to store six cars. Um, they are what do you call it, uh, old ancient cars. And he has a genuine, it's a genuine thing, genuine collection. Thing is that when he leaves or departs that property, somebody's got a building that they could easily and quickly turn into a property similar to the one, or even better than the one that's being put on this uh, book to us. So I just one like a, some comment upon this policy of uh, restricting back land development. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Holland, please. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, it was a question I wanted to ask earlier, but can't seem to be able to use my chat facility. So um, I hope I can uh, hopefully get it answered. Looking at the plans, it looks like um, part of the property um, in this application is on a raft, uh, as if it sits on stilts above the land. So I was just curious as to if I've understood that correctly from the drawing. Uh, and if so, is this to a, re a, a remedial implication uh, in, in, in the foresight that there may be flooding in the future. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Holland. I'll go back to our officer on that in a moment. Meanwhile, Councillor Puddicombe wish to make a comment. Um, yeah, thank you, Chair. And thank you to Mr Wakefield for showing us that um, photograph and all the caveats he laid on it before allowing us to actually see the photograph. And the only conclusion I got from it was that it was part of what we know was a major flood event in Poynton um, last summer. Um, I think I would like to congratulate Mr. Russell, the applicant, for his design, um, the timber cladding with oak posts and a turf roof. Uh, I think it looks very interesting. And um, it does say that the dwelling would be slightly raised above ground level on brick plinths and posts, which I took to be a remedial um, remedial uh, solution to possible flooding. Um, although I'm not sure, I'm no expert, so I wouldn't know how effective that would be. Um, so I, mean, I find um, the application attractive but do have some concerns about garden grabbing and uh, backland development um so i'm sorry chair but at the moment i, I wouldn't want to make a proposal on, on on this one thank you sounds like we're in a similar boat on this no pun intended um <laughs> mr wakefield please would you like to come back on the question uh, raised by councillor holland about whether the prop the the proposed property is on a on a, a raft Yes, certainly. Sorry, I'm smiling at the boat. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, to be honest, I don't know what the reasons for. I mean, as, as we saw in the photographs, the existing extension at, 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 George's, at 16 George's Road East is, is slightly raised as well. So whether it's uh, a, a, a design uh, feature or whether it's, it's, it's there for flooding purposes um, or mitigation of flooding, flood risk, then um, it kind of works both ways, really. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, I don't really know the answer to the background to it, exactly why it's, it, why it's raised. Sorry, Chairman. Thank you. OK, thanks, uh, Mr. Wakefield. Councillor Mannion, please. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Just, um, again, maintaining the point to try and steer this forward to a conclusion, this issue although I do still have reservations 
Uh, I am um, reassured by uh, the the openness and frankness of the applicant when he uh, when he uh, when he spoke to the committee. Uh, that is, he is fully aware of the. Um, the, the level of risk, and that's the word, isn't it? And picking up Councillor Dean's explanation uh, of uh, to, the, to this area for flooding in the future. And in an effort to move this forward, uh, I, I'm happy to propose that we accept the officer's recommendation and approve this application. Uh, I do think we've, uh, I think we've debated the key issue. The open space issue is, um, uh, to me, is a, a, is, um, a dead duck. These, the Batland development one, which uh, I, I do have some concerns, but again, Councillor Smetham made a very pertinent point about the long, narrow gardens. Uh, the one thing I do have a little bit of concern about still is this this real and tangible risk uh, to the property from um, extreme weather, which we all know we're, we're told that we need to expect to experience more frequently in the future than we have in the past. But to an attempt to move the... Um, this matter forward, I'm happy to propose on balance, which many planning issues are, aren't they, for us? On balance, that I'm satisfied with the assurances I've heard, and I'm happy to propose we accept the officer's recommendation and approve the application together with the conditions as listed. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Manning, for that proposal. Does it have a seconder, please, Councillor Smitham? Yes, please. I, I would like to second. I think this is designed by an architect. If there's somebody who knows how to deal with the issues, I would think that would be a appropriate person. And presumably the rafting would allow the rainfall to drain away underneath just as efficiently or inefficiently as it has, has done in the past. Um, and if an architect is satisfied that he can build a sus sustainable property, then I think that's uh, sufficient for me. And I'm sorry for Poynton for the issues that they are facing with flooding. But as I say, I do believe that it's not beyond the wit of, wit of man or woman to be able to deal with that. Thank you, Councillor Smetherland. So it's been proposed and seconded for approval. Uh, Mr Wakefield, any uh, comments you'd like to make before we move to the vote on this? No, thank you, Chairman. No, nothing at all. Great, thank you. And uh, Councillor Murphy, does I see your hand go up? Yes, you did, uh, Mr Chairman. I'd just like the clarification on this uh, phrase, backland development. Is there such a, a recognised uh, issue? Because if it, if, if it is, I mean, it does have, have, have raise issues about people putting up buildings in their back gardens. And I'd just like clarification or confirmation that there is such a thing as backland development in planning terms. Um, I, I believe there is. It's certainly referenced in the Oldley Edge uh, neighbourhood plan, um, which is currently uh, under development. But I'll just, I will seek clarification from our officer as I'm not a planning expert. Uh, Mr Wakefield. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, th yes, there is, um, and I think most of most relevance is as as I touched on before. There's there's a policy in the Point and Neighbourhood Plan that specifically relates to backland development, which is is addressed on 36 and 37 of the report, and it sets out a number of criteria. So it talks about proposals for tandem or backland development within an existing residential curtilage should meet the following criteria. Um, um, so just, just to go through them briefly, so in terms of a satisfactory and separate means of access to the new dwelling can be obtained through an existing public highway. As we've seen, there is an access route there that's, that leads onto Bukeley Road. Um, I'm sure Neil can add further comments if, if, if further assurances is required on the suitability of that particular access. Um, the, Secondly, the amenities of residents of existing and proposed dwellings will be safeguarded as a consequence of the proposed de development. Uh, and I think members, well, it's not been raised, so I'm, I, I tend to think that members are probably satisfied that that particular point is addressed. Uh, officers certainly are. Um, item C relates to, um, well, 
it relates to, to the green belt because it's the proposed dwelling would not result in the creation of an over intensive development to the area and detract from the openness of the green belt at this point so that's the green belt point and we're not in the green belt here and then d the plot size of the proposed dwelling should be appropriate to the size of the dwelling and the character of the immediate local area um, and as we've set out this this building uh, does sit within this relatively large long garden um, which is double the size of, of, of the other gardens on the adjacent properties or, or most of the other gardens on the adjacent properties um, and you know it's, it's relatively small scale and low level uh, and, and for that reason we, we find that it it does meet those four criteria um, but yeah so the concept is there and it's backed up by policy um, but as we've We've addressed it there in the report, so hopefully that's helpful. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Wakefield. I hope, Councillor Murphy, that addresses your question. Uh, so, I would now like to take the vote on this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. <clears throat> so, it has been proposed by Councillor Mannion and seconded by Councillor Smitham for approval. And uh, so, I'll now call each member one by one, ask them to turn on their camera and microphone, and state whether they are for against or not voting on that proposal for approval. Uh, Councillor Liz Braithwaite, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. It's uh, a difficult one, but on balance uh, for the proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Tony Dean, please. Uh, against, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Paul Findlow. Against. Councillor Alift Harewood. For. Councillor Sally Holland. Uh, yes, Chair, I'm for. Councillor Ian McFarlane. Thank you, Chair. On balance, I'm against. Councillor Brendan Murphy. Against, Mr Chairman. Councillor Nick Mannion. For, Chair. Councillor James Nicholas. I'm against. Councillor Brian Puddicombe. At four. And Councillor Leslie Smatham. Four. And um, yes, uh, I'm, I'm not voting on this. Abstaining. I'm abstaining on this because um, it's very much on balance. Um, so I think that is carried by six votes to five with one abstention. Thank you very much, members. Um, and that concludes also today's meeting. So thank you very much and see you in a month's time. Bye, everybody. <laughs>